Today's video is a cautionary tale. It's what could happen if you purchase the wrong used Samsung device off of eBay. Stay tuned. As you know, I already have the Surface Duo, but I wanted to try out the Galaxy Z Fold series. I don't have a lot of play money for stuff like that, so what I want to do is find something used that I could try out to see if I like the form factor. So a while back, I was on eBay, and I found about five or six phones on eBay that looked interesting, and one of them was a Galaxy Z Fold 2 that had a cracked back and had an unlocked bootloader. Well, I didn't think that was a big deal because I have several phones with unlocked bootloaders. My Essential PH1 has an unlocked bootloader. I'm able to install and run Android just fine. So I really didn't think that an unlocked bootloader on a Samsung Galaxy device was that big of a deal. So before I got started with anything else, I wanted to put screen protectors on as this phone did not come with any. Here I am putting the front screen protector and inside screen protectors on the phone. Next was to replace the back of the phone that had been cracked by the previous owner. This was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, and the replacement part wasn't that expensive on eBay. Powering on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 for the first time, I came across this. A message I've seen on my Essential PH1. No big deal, right? The phone continued to boot up into what can only be described as a strange looking OS. It wasn't Samsung's one UI operating system. It was instead a debugging version of Android. Very limited, very basic, but just so that you could test the phone. No big deal again, I thought. I'll just wipe it out. Using Samsung's Odin program, I downloaded stock firmware and reloaded the phone. I started then to set up the phone as I would any other phone by hooking it up to my previous phone and copying things over using Samsung Switch. This is where I started running into a couple of hiccups. I have a Galaxy Watch that I like to wear, and I use it to track steps and heart rate and things like that. The Samsung Health app wouldn't open, which means I can't sync that information to my Google account. Proceeding further, I find out that the Samsung Pay app, which I kind of use, but it's not terribly important, it's not working. The app opens, but it just sits there pinwheeling. So with the inability to use Samsung's dedicated apps, I'm limited to basic email and text notifications on my Galaxy Watch. With the bootloader being unlocked, the Google Play Store would not certify itself. This means that certain apps would not install, would not update, and would not run properly. I had to figure out a way around that. And for that, I used a program called Magisk. Magisk has instructions online that can tell you how to back up a file in your phone, put it into your computer, load it into Odin, and reflash it onto the phone. This allows the phone to essentially hide the bootloader. Now when my phone boots up, I no longer see this warning about my bootloader being unlocked. And the Play Store now is certified. So I can run all of Google's apps, as well as Netflix and other things. This allows me to run Google Pay, which I can use with a Wear OS watch, and all of my apps function normally. The thing that you need to look for with a Samsung Galaxy phone with an unlocked bootloader is to see if Knox has been tripped. You see, every modern Samsung Galaxy device comes loaded with Samsung Knox, which is not a program, but it's a part of the actual hardware. Going over to Android Central for a better explanation gives us this. Samsung Knox is a special security layer found in top tier Samsung phones that can separate and isolate personal and business user data. For most of us, Knox will be used for Samsung Pass and Secure Folder, both of which can be accessed in the biometrics and security section in your phone settings. So, was all of this worth it? Was it worth it to buy this phone on eBay 
have to fix it myself and then go through the entire process of relocking the bootloader and and basically bypassing all the Samsung stuff. Well, one, I was the first, last, and only bid on this eBay auction. So it was kind of an accident that I purchased the phone, but I only paid $500 for it. If you include the screen protectors and the back, I think my total might have been $570 for the phone. It's a 256 gig factory unlocked Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2, and it works great. But for any of you wanting to purchase a used Samsung phone on eBay, my warning is this. Make sure beforehand that either the bootloader is locked or that Knox has not been tripped. If you want to find out if Knox has been tripped or not, ask for a picture of the download screen. Now, if you see a picture like this, you're good to go. But if that number is not zero and says one, then Knox has been tripped and cannot be repaired. So none of your Samsung Pay, Samsung Fitness apps are going to work. And you might also have to go through that whole process that I did with Magisk. Since I had the time and I had plenty of other phones to use, I did actually send this phone off to Samsung before I repaired the back to see if they could do anything about fixing Knox. I sent the phone to Samsung. It overnighted there, overnighted back, and it took them a couple days to process it, but they just flat out refused to repair it. Beyond economical repair, they said. That just means they're not going to touch it because of Knox. Once Knox is gone, it's a hard fuse on the motherboard, and to replace it, they have to replace the whole motherboard, which means taking the entire phone apart which they don't want to do. So keep that in mind. Well, there you have it. That's my adventure and my warning on purchasing used Samsung phones on eBay. As always, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below as I do try to answer every single one of your comments. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. I thank you for watching and have a great day.